A recent study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that one of every two American adults has or is at risk of having diabetes, with about a third of those with diabetes unaware that they have it. One of every two Americans now either has diabetes or is at high risk of developing it. Just think about that for a moment. What's more, the incidence of diabetes among children has skyrocketed over the past several years, especially during the pandemic. Some estimates suggest that the rate of type 2 diabetes in kids and adolescents doubled during the last two years alone. This is a huge public health catastrophe, and it's only getting worse over time. That's the bad news. The good news is that we now have a large body of evidence suggesting that a simple, low-cost intervention could have a profound impact on this epidemic of metabolic disease, and that's a low-carbohydrate diet. In this video, I'll review the latest research on low-carbohydrate diets and diabetes and blood sugar disorders. I'll also share some resources and tips to help you get started with low-carb eating if you have metabolic or blood sugar-related issues. My hope is to give you the information and tools you need to take charge of your metabolic health so you don't end up being another diabetes statistic. Ready? Let's get to it. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Kresser here with another Tuesday tip video for you. If you're interested in free tips on how to optimize your health, improve your performance, and extend your lifespan, hit the subscribe button in the lower right corner, and then tap the bell to get notified when new videos are available. I just came across a new study comparing the effects of a ketogenic and low-carb Mediterranean diet on blood sugar markers published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. The lead author on this paper was Christopher Gardner, who has done some of the best research on low-carb and other diet interventions in the past. This new study was rare in the nutrition literature in that it was a randomized controlled trial. As you may know, a lot of the studies published in this field are observational or epidemiological. So this means that researchers will just follow a group of people, uh, watch what they eat, and then watch what happens to them over time. And those studies are more practical with large numbers of people because you don't have to lock them up in a ward and control what they eat uh, and control all the other variables. But it means that they're a lot noisier. Um, it is much more risk of confounding factors. For example, if someone's eating a healthier diet, what else are they doing that's contributing to their health? Because people who eat healthy tend to make other choices that are you know, beneficial for their health, like getting more exercise, getting more sleep, taking a probiotic, who knows? Researchers try to control for all of these potentially confounding factors, but they never can control for all of them. And so observational research cannot really uh, give us clear evidence about causality, that one change causes another. And that's where randomized controlled trials come in. So this trial involved 40 participants, 33 of whom completed the trial with borderline uh, diabetes or full-fledged type 2 diabetes. It compared two 12-week interventions, a ketogenic diet and a low-carb Mediterranean diet. Both were whole foods diets with no sugar and refined carbohydrates allowed. Now the primary outcome reported in the study was that there was no significant difference in hemoglobin A1C levels between the two groups at the end of the study. And this is similar to a previous paper that Christopher Gardner and colleagues published where they compared the effects of a one-year low-carb diet with a one-year low-fat diet and found that both groups saw similar improvements in terms of weight loss and other metabolic markers. Now, Gardner's findings in both of these studies suggest that there's more than one diet that can help us to lose weight and improve blood sugar. And I appreciate that and agree with that. I've always said that there's no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to diet and nutrition. But in my mind, the far more important finding in this study is that both low-carb diets decreased hemoglobin A1C levels by 7 to 9% and weight by 7 to 8% in only three months. And these improvements occurred despite the fact that participants in the trial were told to either stop their blood sugar medications or reduce the dose by half. And this is an important side note here. The, the participants who did the keto diet were told to stop their medication entirely, whereas those on the low-carb Mediterranean diet only cut the dose in half. 
Now this stacked the deck in favor of the Mediterranean diet. And if both groups had stopped their medications entirely, the keto diet would likely have outperformed the Mediterranean diet. Regardless, these improvements are astounding for only 12 weeks and are just as significant, if not more so, than what you'd expect taking medication. It's probably obvious to all of you watching why it's so important to have a low cost, natural, and highly effective tool for preventing and even reversing type two diabetes or prediabetes. The average cost to the healthcare system of treating a single patient with type two diabetes is about $15,000 per year. So if someone's diagnosed at age 40 and lives to age 80, that's a cost of $600,000 over the lifetime of that patient. Is it any wonder that our healthcare system is going bankrupt? And diabetes has a huge impact on individuals too. Let me list just a few of the complications that it can cause. Heart disease and stroke, caused by damage to your blood vessels and the nerves that control your heart and blood vessels. Dementia and Alzheimer's, caused by the brain's inability to process glucose effectively when glucose regulation is impaired, as it is in diabetes and prediabetes. Cancer, because cancer cells thrive on high sugar levels in the blood. Kidney disease, due to damage to the blood vessels in the kidneys. A lot of people with diabetes develop high blood pressure, which can also damage the kidneys. Eye disease, due to changes in fluid levels, swelling in the tissues, and damage to blood vessels in the eyes. Sexual and bladder problems caused by damage to the nerves and reduced blood flow in the genitals and bladder. Nerve problems like diabetic neuropathy caused by damage to the nerves and the small blood vessels that nourish your nerves with oxygen and nutrients. Gum disease and other dental problems because a high amount of sugar in the saliva helps harmful bacteria grow in your mouth. So I could go on, but I think you get the point. Diabetes is not a disease that you wanna develop. All right, so let's get back to the good news. You don't have to just wait around to get diabetes. And even if you already have prediabetes or high normal blood sugar, you don't have to just accept that you're gonna to progress to full-fledged type two diabetes and be consigned to a lifetime of medication and worsening symptoms. You can take charge of your metabolic health. And one of the best ways to do that is with a lower carbohydrate diet. This new study by Christopher Gardner is not the only one to suggest that low carb and keto diets improve outcomes for people with high blood sugar. There are hundreds, if not thousands of similar studies in the scientific literature. On my website, I have a bibliography of 30 randomized controlled trials examining the effectiveness of low carb diets for weight loss and metabolic health. I also have a link to a summary of 10 meta-analyses that compared low carb to low fat diets for weight loss and disease prevention. All of this research suggests that diet can be a powerful tool for preventing and even reversing diabetes and metabolic syndrome. I'll put these links in the description section below this video. I'm also gonna put a link to my free ebook, The Lowdown on Low Carb. This ebook is packed with evidence-based information about low carb diets, including the seven things everyone should know before trying a low carb diet, eight specific health conditions that a low carb diet may help to heal, why not all carbohydrates are equal and how to tell the difference, the six types of people who tend to thrive on low carb diets, and the three-step process for determining your ideal carbohydrate intake. I'll also drop a link to my complete guide to the keto diet. This guide covers basic information about ketogenic diets, nine conditions that benefit from keto, how to know if a keto diet is right for you, how long to follow a keto diet, and a three-step process for getting started. Finally, it's important to know that there are several nutrients that are crucial for maintaining optimal blood sugar, blood pressure, and metabolic health. These include magnesium, potassium, vitamin D, chromium, choline, riboflavin or B2, vitamin B6, EPA and DHA, and vitamin K2. Sadly, the vast majority of Americans are not getting enough of not just one, but several of these critical nutrients. 100% don't get enough potassium, 94% don't get enough vitamin D, 92% don't get enough choline, and well over 90% don't get enough magnesium if you use the updated RDA that's based on current body weights. Soluble fibers like beta-glucan have also been found to maintain normal blood sugar, and most people aren't getting enough of this type of fiber either. Even if you're eating a relatively good diet, if you're not getting enough of these nutrients, your metabolic health will suffer. 
This is one of the many reasons I created Adapt Naturals, to close the nutrient gap and give you confidence that you're getting the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients you need for optimal blood sugar and metabolic function. Just click the button on the screen to learn more about Adapt Naturals, and I'll put a link in the description section with the other links as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new videos. And if you know someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them. I want to help as many people as I can to take charge of their own health. Obesity, diabetes, and blood sugar disorders are one of the biggest public health threats that we face. So please help me to spread the word about these simple steps that we can take to reverse this epidemic and empower people to get their blood sugar and metabolic health under control. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. That's it for now. See you next time.